For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift. Of God. I want to focus in on two words through faith. Be seated. Be seated, please. The fundamentals of the faith part, whatever it is. I, I just need 40 minutes. The depth and breadth and expanse of faith is difficult to conceptualize. Faith, faith is hard to grasp. Therefore, we have made this concept feasible for our functionality, advantageous to our apathy, and suitable for our stolidity. But I rise today under mandate to bring relevant the fundamentals of the faith. I rise to expose the realms and dimensions of faith so as to expand our reach for God. I want to bring us to a place where we reach for God further than we ever have before. That our arms are actually extended. Glory to God. And we're like that, 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 that hero whose arms extend to reach. I want you to reach beyond the realm of God that you've previously had access to. I want you to reach into the depth of God and be able to connect with parts of God that people in generations haven't been able to connect to. I want you to tap into mantles and anointings that have laid dormant in the earth realm for decades and uh, yea even centuries I want you to be a people who have a reach for God today your arms grow as you reach the limitations that have, that have historically been your problem be alleviated today. Tell somebody I'm going further. You will begin to take hold of him. To take hold of his word, his promises, his power. It is about to be in your hand. You're about to have in your hands the power of God. You're about to, da, 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 see. You're about to have in your hands the power of God. Clap your hands and get ready. Wake your hands up. Wake your hands up. Look at him while you're clapping and say, you're about to have power. I'm about to have to be careful what I touch because there's going to be a transfer. You're getting ready to have power. I'm going to have to be careful what I put them on because it's going to live. You're getting ready to have power. So I want to expose today in the few minutes that remain that are mine, I want to expose five dimensions of faith. I want to make visible to your imagination and comprehensible to your mind five dimensions of faith. The first dimension is the believability of God. Say, the believability of God. Uh, give me Hebrews 11 and 6, daughter. But without faith. 
Christ. But without faith. It is impossible to please him. It is impossible to please or to be acceptable unto God. Faith is the thing that makes us suitable for God. You will never connect to what does not have some commonality. Whatever you connect to, there is some common there. Something in common. Oftentimes it's the wrong thing for connection. But there is something there in common. Read. For he that cometh to God. For he that cometh to God. Must believe that he is. Must believe that God is. And that he is a rewarder. That he is a rewarder. Of them that of diligently them that seek diligently him. diligently seek him. God. The origin and completion of all things. God. The self-existent and all Powerful one, God, the infinite and eternal one, God, who has never not and will always be, yet he perpetually is God. The ancient of days, God, out of which everything that is came out of. God. Sometimes I think we don't appreciate who God is or what God is or how God is. And we think of God like we think of a big man. <laughs> we think of God like we think of a, a, a Superman or a Batman or a superhero because God's only function for us is to deliver. And all we want from God is to deliver us. When we get ourselves in trouble, come get me, my God. Now you're my God because I'm in my trouble. When reality, God is so much greater than a deliverer. God is so much greater than Shama and Jaira and Imkadesh and Sitkanu and Rapha and Roha. God is so much greater than the names he's given us. He only gave us names so that we could connect to some dimensions of him. But the whole of God is inexplainable. God stands in Genesis 1 and creates all things and speaks all things into existence. And God declares that it is good. And God does all of this. And then God in 2 says, and let us make man. And God, different from everything else he created, took his hands and shaped the dust of the earth and took his mouth and breathed, glory to God, into what he shaped himself. You have an expression of God living in you. You are not God. My son is not me, but he has me living in him. I know him because I know me and I have put me in him. Therefore, he is like me. So if you've seen him, you've seen me, but he is not me. Now are we the sons of God, but we are not God. So don't be deceived by this erroneous teaching. God in all of his expanse. What makes God then accessible to the human mind? How does the human mind conceive God? How does it engage? God. See, we don't put respect on his name. How, how, how 
does my mind get God? That's why you can confuse me concerning God if you mess with my mind. Because my mind is still trying to wrap itself around God. But with my mind, I cannot know God. With my intellect, I cannot learn God. With my emotions, I cannot feel God. The only way I can connect with God is by faith. I'm in the first dimension. Only faith connects the infinite with the finite. Only faith connects the eternal with the temporal. Only faith makes God believable. Intellect will allow us to believe that there is a God, but only faith will allow us to believe that God is. In order for me to believe God, he has to give me faith. So then God has given every man the measure of faith. If I don't give you the ability to believe me, then you cannot, regardless of how much my word says, you can't believe me. I've given you the key to believing me. Thank you. Nobody can say when we stand before him, I couldn't believe you. He's going to say, no, I gave you the first measure. What happened was the measure I gave you was never expanded. But everything around you was. Everything about you grew but your faith. Because you fed everything but your faith. So then your spirit wants to believe him, but your faith is too small to reach that dimension of him. So you're stuck. And some of the teaching that we're listening to that draws thousands is stuck in the measure of faith. The measure of faith is called justification. It is the first dimension of your salvation. Thereby, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. But justification is the introduction to salvation. And if you live at the introduction, you'll never know the fullness of the book. How are you in relationship and every time you go out with somebody, you're talking about introductory matters. How we've been hanging out for five years and we're still trying to figure out your favorite color. What's your favorite food? I didn't told you this 36,000 times. Can we go deeper? Well, can't go deeper because my faith has not grown. It has not been expanded. My interest is not bigger than your favorite meal. How interested are we really in God? It says on the first, in the first dimension, faith is the believability of God. An atheist does not lack faith. An atheist simply has a faith that is too small to reach the God that they're looking for. Or the dimension of God that they desire. 
And there are many saints sitting in the church who are two experiences from being an atheist. I'm going to go strong and I'm sorry and I love you, but it's only going to take the death of your mama who wasn't saved and you got saved. And now your faith tells you something that your reality doesn't want to accept. And so now you're going to change your faith. So now there can't be a hell because I can't wrap my mind around my mama being in hell. I know she wasn't saved. I know she didn't live a holy. I know she dogged God every chance she got. But now I'm having to accept the reality of my faith concerning who I love. My faith ain't big enough to handle it. Because this faith only applies to people I don't know. But when I'm connected, my faith is challenged. And it's happening all across the body of Christ. It's happening all across the body of Christ. There are pastors who are falling because the faith was, they preached faith, but they didn't live it enough to grow it to the place to handle what was getting ready to come. And God kept giving opportunity for the expansion of faith, but they kept denying it because you don't feel like it. And when you deny it because you don't feel like it, when life happens again, your faith is not ready to handle it. The test came and you hadn't studied. The test was on chapter 12 and you're still reading chapter 1. Because you don't come to Sunday school. You don't come to life class. You don't come to Bible study. And you partially come to Sundays. So how can I be ready for life with my faith? And here again, it is not that I don't want to. I can't. I'm not able. I don't have the capacity. I have the will, but not the capacity. I got a Rolls Royce, but it has no gas. It ain't going nowhere. So I need faith to start in believing God. First dimension of faith. Let's go to the second dimension. The second dimension of faith is the connectivity to God. Uh, give me Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. The connectivity to God. Read. All things are delivered unto me. All things are delivered unto me. Of my father. Of my father. Here it is. Jesus says everything not all things that my father possesses. I'm going to break this down a little later in a minute. But everything I need to fulfill my purpose is delivered to me. All right? Read. And no man knoweth the son but no, the father. No man knoweth the son but the father. Read. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. No man knows the father except the son, and nobody knows the son except the father. Their relationship is mutually exclusive. Read. And he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. Wait a minute. The only way I can know the father is I got to know the son who in knowing the son reveals the father to me. That's where we get only Jesus. Because I cannot be connected to purpose until I know salvation. My purpose, Father, is revealed through salvation, Son. Wow. Yeah. What a word. What a word. What a word, 
So if I'm searching for my purpose and I have not embraced salvation, I'm searching amiss. Because it's only in him that I live. In him that I move. In him that I have my Are you saved? Yes, you're justified because you believe that God is. But how are you doing in the process called sanctification? Because the process between justification and glorification is being transformed. Is being chiseled is being uh, made into the image is becoming the reflection of what I see in the word. That's sanct it ain't a dress. It's not a look. It's not a church. It's growth in your faith. My faith needs to grow so that I can handle the next deal of life. Life keeps dealing cards. And you got to play the hand you're dealt. You can't trade the hand in and get another. No, you got to play what you dealt. But what gives you the strategy to play what's handed to you is faith. The connectivity to God is the means by which we experience and encounter God. It brings the eternal to the temporal. It brings the supernatural to the natural. It provides the opportunity for breakthrough healing and deliverance. It equips the believer with the spirit of God to enable God-like living. It administers the grace for the power of God to ignite our gifts and talents. This connectivity has a name. It's not Wi-Fi. It's not 5G+. Plus. It's not Ethernet. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the connectivity to purpose. Because we say God, we think of Pharaoh and we think of Zeus and we think of all these. No, no. When you think of God as ultimate purpose and God releases out of him to us purpose that is connected to ultimate purpose. So then in order for the purpose I gave you to work, you got to stay connected to me. Otherwise the deposit will die. The deposit will lose its effect. Or it'll lose its attractiveness. And we start saying, I don't want to do this. Because my discipline in God is remedial. And now I don't want what God wants for me. And I'm strong enough to resist it. And then God has to break us. And tell your neighbor, I've had enough breaking seasons. I've learned to just say yes. Listen, you... You have enough seasons where God breaks you and brings you to a yes. You, 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 your car break down, your tires pop three at a time, stuff start going wrong in every area of life. You're unemployed, can't find a job, got a great resume. God is breaking you. And why is he breaking me? Because I kept not saying yes. So God has to break us to bring us to a willful submission because we act like what he requires of us will hurt us. Tell your neighbor what God requires of you only hurts your stubborn flesh but it'll make your spirit thrive. I got to hustle along. It is the connectivity to God. Your faith 
is in Jesus Christ. Is in Jesus the Christos. The anointed one. The Messiah. Who originally didn't even come for us. Ain't no Jews in here. That in his original plan, you weren't in it. Jesus runs into a woman who needs a miracle for her daughter, I believe it is. And she begins to cry out to him. And, and Jesus said, it's not meat to give the children's bread to the dogs. I know you deep. But not long ago, you were a dog. But he came unto his own. And his own received him not. So then as many as received him, gave he them power. To become the sons of God. Now are we. Does not yet appear when it appears. We're never going to be like him. That's Detroit, excuse me. He gave, us, he gave us the faith to become the sons of God. Now we're included. So he has to get the leadership together. And he says, Peter, go to sleep. I got to show you something. Because you can't handle this while you're awake. There's some things that you can't handle while you're awake. God has to deal with you while you sleep. He said, Peter, in order for my kingdom to expand, I've got to expand my leadership. So he gives him a dream of a great cloth and all of these beasts. And he says, rise, Peter, slay and eat. And he, Peter says, listen, I don't eat what is unclean. God says, do not call what I have sanctified unclean. Well, God, the only reason I'm calling it unclean is because you called it unclean. God says, yes, I did, but man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth. Stop living in what God said. Get alive in what God is saying. He said, I sanctified what I once called unclean. Now rise and eat. And he loved us so much that he gave us our own apostle. He said, Peter, I don't even know if you're fully equipped to handle this assignment. So let me get one persecuting the church. Come here, Saul. He met him on the road to Damascus. He locked, knocked him off the horse. Knocked him off of his high place. Some of y'all getting knocked off of your high place. Knocked him off of his high place, blinded him, had a conversation with him. When he got done talking to him, he didn't say go preach. He said go to Ananias. You can't preach till you submit somewhere. If you ain't submitted, shut your mouth. If nobody has the authority to tell you to sit down, shut your mouth. Shut it down. It's illegal if Paul, who was taught by Gamaliel, who had all the degrees, who had all of the elements necessary, if he had to go and have hands laid on him and come under authority, what do you think you got to do? Read his resume. Paul was a bad brother. God says, I'm saving you, Paul, and I'm going to change your name from Saul, which was a, a, a Jewish name, to a Hebrew name. I'm going to give you a Greek name, and I'm going to bring you and send you to the Gentiles. You take me to who I originally didn't include. And so Paul wrote three-fourths of the New Testament. 
Paul went on these missionary journeys because he's taking God to who God has just accepted. Tell your neighbor, don't ever get grand. You still new in this. I don't care how heavy your anointing is, you still new. You still wet behind the ears. You still got Similac on your breath. Don't you get beyond yourself. It is the connectivity to God. Thirdly, I'm almost there. Thirdly, uh, the third dimension of faith is the embraceability of God. Say embraceability of God. Galatians 1 and 9. I feel it coming on me and I got to get through here. Galatians 1 and 9. As we said before, uh huh. so say I now again. I didn't said it many times before. I'm going to say it again. Read. If any man preach any other gospel unto you. If anybody. Man, woman, boy, girl, dog, horse, cat, donkey. Cow. If any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have re other than what you have received. Let the man be accursed. He says, if you hear a gospel other than the gospel that the ones assigned to you have preached, shut them down. Close your ear to them. We have open ear syndrome. We are looking for whatever is new, whatever is fresh, whatever hadn't been said before. And there's nothing new under the sun. The only thing we get that's new is the revelation of the old. The mysteries that have been hidden in Christ are now revealed in our time. But it ain't a new thing. Holiness is still right. I don't care what they preach and where they come from. I don't care how many bells hanging from their robe. Holiness is mandatory. And deliverance is necessary. That message will never change. And if anybody preach it, they will break your connectivity to God. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. You'll start serving God out of intellect. Yes. Based on what you can explain and understand. Yes. The means by which we experience and encounter God brings the eternal to the temporal. The connectivity to God. The embraceability to God. Is that where I am? Number three. The embraceability of God, it is the standard. It is the standard. In order to embrace God, you do not do it humanly. We have made the embrace of God a feeling. So even our pursuit of God is for God to make us feel. Hug me, God. Wrap your arm. We're, we're, we're trying to be humanly intimate with a supernatural being. And we forget he told Mary, touch me not. You can't connect to me like that. Because I'm not there anymore. There was a time I was there. But I, I, I've come back from the dead now. I'm, I'm in full authority. I'm seated. You can't touch me like that, boo. Not that I'm better than that. I just don't exist in that realm of need anymore. The embraceability of God is the apostolically established doctrinal outline declaring the identity and operation of God. It is our belief system. 
Take that back. It is the belief system. It is not ours yet. It exists on its own in authority. Period. The faith, the doctrine of faith, the declaration of faith, the confession of that faith exists alone in full authority. It is not dependent on your believability. It is truth whether you like it, accept it, agree with it or not. Because it don't come down to you. You must come up to it. Y'all tired of me yet? So when we talk about the belief system, what, in Jesus' name, what do we believe? Give it to me, daughter. What do we believe? That's a great question. What do we believe? The confession of faith. What do we believe? We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the only begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God. See, the Methodist people know this. Some of the Kojic folk know it from back in the day. It is the confession of faith. And we used to have to say it every Sunday. It was a part of our liturgical worship. But we don't require it anymore, so we don't know it. There was a time you'd ask somebody, well, what do you believe? I believe in God, one Father. And they roll it off to you, you'd be like, wow. But now you ask people what they believe, they'd be like, uh, I believe in Jesus. Well, what you believe about Jesus? He's all right. We know songs. We don't know scripture. And it was okay when most songs were based in scripture. But now our gospel music is inspirational. Ain't no Bible in it. And you're quoting songs like his word. Jesus didn't say that. Tupac said that. And you're putting it on the same level because you're trusting who's not assigned to you. Y'all ready to go? So I want you to look up the confession of faith. And I ought to to make us say it. I'm going to get it and put it on the screens real good next week. And we'll be ready to declare the confession of faith. We're going to read it till we know it. And we're going to say it till we know it. And we're going to keep going. I'm going to email it to you, whatever we need. We're going to keep saying it until you know it. And Well, that's tradition. Well, that's why you're not saved. Excuse me. That's why you're struggling in your salvation because you don't have no repetition. You're looking for something new every day. You need some repetition. God is the same yesterday. Number four, I got to go. My time is gone. Number four, the fourth dimension of faith is the maturity in God. Is the maturity in God. Faith is the means by which we mature in God. Dancing does not mature you in God. Does not mature you. <laughs> that is not what matures you. You learn that from somebody. You will study in Iona a lot because you love the way she's speaking tongues. The late 
Bishop, I own a lot. And so you get up, and that ain't coming out of your spirit. It's coming out of your memory. But what you're invoking is I own a lot struggle. Don't study nobody's tongues trying to talk like them because you're going to command their realm of warfare. We love to hear uh, the late Prophet Nathan Simmons speak in tongues. Must I? Must I say it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, God, forgive me. We want to mimic antics without understanding what comes with it. Your struggle ought to produce your own antics. You ought to respond in your worship based on how you struggled in your flesh. Nobody talking to me in here. You ought to love God in demonstration and in operation and expression to the level you've been tested this week. The maturity in God, Romans 12 and 3. Read, daughter. For I say, for I say, through the grace, through given, the grace unto me, given unto me, read to every man that is among you. Every one of you, read not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Come on down a little bit, read. But to think soberly, soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. If you want to do an assessment of yourself, look at the level of your faith. The bottom of the color of your shoes are not a true assessment. The thickness of the chain that your cross is hanging to is not a true assessment. The color of the stone in your ring is not a true assessment. How much money you got in a bank, how much money you make a year, what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in is not a true assessment. If you want to know what level you're on, look at your faith. This is the measure of our maturity in God. We receive faith progressively. Faith is designed to take us from faith to faith. That means faith is manifest in several dimensions and faith will bring us to the next dimension of faith that will bring us to the next dimension of faith. But we got to get to the place where we come out of the original measure and say, God, I need to grow in you. I need a greater exposure. I need a greater revelation of my purpose. There are some things you're asking God for that God cannot answer right now because you're not ready to hear it and you not don't have the capacity now to walk therein but I dare you to get on your face before God and say God expand my faith mature me in my faith somebody said I don't want to pray that because I know that means trials uh, and tribulations will come uh, and I don't want no more trials uh, and I don't want no more tribulations uh, but if you don't be tried uh, you cannot come forth uh, as pure gold uh, you need to tell God uh, whatever uh, I got to go through
in order to go to the next level um, as long as you go with me uh, as long as you walk with me uh, as long as you let me know uh, that I'm not in it alone uh, elbow your neighbor uh, and say neighbor I'm willing uh, to go through it uh, as long uh, as he walks with me as long as uh, as he talks with me as long as he tells me that I am his own I don't want to live on the mountaintop if he's not there with me wherever he is that's where I want to be so if I gotta go through a storm let's go on through it if I gotta go through the rain, let's go on through it. If I gotta go through some heartache, let's go on through it. But Lord, please don't leave me in this situation. Don't leave me in this agony. As long as when I lift my hands, you're right there as long as when I open your mouth open my mouth you speak as long as I know that I'm not alone I'll go through the storm I'll go through the rain I'll go through sickness I'll go through pain I'll go through rejection. I'll go through abandonment. I'll go through it all. Because through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to depend on his word. Say it. God. Growth in God commands the greater exposure of God only to the degree of purpose. Here's what I want to give you that they have not told you. You will never know more of God than your purpose requires. Never. God will only reveal himself to you to the degree of the purpose he's given you. So there are some things outside of your purpose that you will never understand. Let me say it another way. God does not give unnecessary information. Whatever information or revelation God gives you, you have a responsibility to it. If God showed you something, you have a responsibility. Not to agree and dog in it, but to intercede on behalf of it. Well, you know, the Lord showed me that they wasn't all of that. Then what did you do with it? You're going to have to give an account. Because God don't give unnecessary information. The realm of revelation that you have, do not compare it to somebody else's. God, I want to have the revelation like apostle. Then you're going to be responsible for teaching it and preaching it. Enjoy hearing it and receive it. But God will not necessarily tell you that. Because it's not suitable to what he's called you to do. So I want to know God not in his totality. No such thing. I want to know God in the totality of the deposit of my purpose. 
God is dealing with you in the realm of purpose. He's walking with you in the realm of your purpose. But if you have made your purpose somebody else's purpose, then the only way you can have deposit there is from them. God won't. God is dealing with you in your area. <clears throat> He's revealing himself to you in your area. I close. The fifth dimension, the fifth dimension of faith. I'll review. Number one is the believability of God. Faith makes God believable. Number two, the connectivity to God. Faith connects us to God. Number three, the embraceability of God. Faith makes us able to embrace God. Not just believe, but connect. Wrap ourselves around and thereby receive him and become like him. Fourthly, faith makes us mature in God. From faith to faith. Finally, faith makes God accessible. 2 Corinthians 1.20. Read it right quick, Donna. All the promises of God in all, him. All the promises of God in Christ. Are yea. Are yea. And in him, amen. And in him, amen. Read. Unto the glory of God by us. This originally makes it look like all of the promises of God in Christ are for me. That's not what it says. It says all of the promises of God in Christ are attainable once we come into agreement with our amen by the purpose that is in us. So it is my purpose that dictates my promises that I can agree with. There's some things you're promised that I'm not. So if I start comparing myself to you, I'll say God don't love me like he loves you. When in reality, God is giving me everything I need. And he's giving you everything you need. But what we need is not the same thing because our purpose is not the same. Are you there? And so we connect with God. We have access to God. What gives us permission through promise to believe God for. What should I be believing God for? I should be believing God for that which enables, equips, and empowers my purpose. Not my pocket. All of those things shall be added unto you. So I should be pursuing. We have a purpose package that God gave us. He gave you a purpose package. We tend to believe based on others' packages. Go back to what he promised you. Go back to what he said to you. Write down your promises. Put them in a book and make it your promises. And walk out those promises. Stand on them. Stop standing on mine. Stand on yours. He loves you enough to talk to you and have me confirm what he said to you. Father, sweet Savior, This faith 
that we are responsible for is so great. And if we end where we started, we need you to be great in us so that we can exercise this great faith. God, thank you for waking up and stirring and giving us a mind to grow in the faith which produces our faith which manifest our promises. Thank you for access to you. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you. The ability to believe you. Thank you. Stir us up. Wake us up. Not just in a shout, not just in a dance, not just in a run, but in a living, in a lifestyle that pleases you and that progresses your purpose. Thank you. Thank you. 